It is an honor and privilege to have been invited to this business summit, and this is the first of this kind, which is running under the theme Enhancing Zimbabwe's Economic Development through public-private sector engagement with the Second Republic. This summit affords me yet another opportunity to interact with stakeholders from the private sector as critical players in the development of our country. The presentations made earlier gives insights into how we can grow our economy to provide jobs, income, and goods to enhance our people's livelihoods and lift many into prosperity. Over and above contributing to economic growth, the private sector also provides essential services such as health, education, and finance, as well as infrastructure development, among others, which are important for growth and improving people's livelihoods. In this regard, it is my hope that this platform will help complement current efforts by my government to enhance dialogue between government and business for the common good of us all, people of Zimbabwe. I'm encouraged that the summit recognizes the strides the Second Republic is making in transforming the economy through the implementation of sound policies as we march towards the attainment of our vision of a prosperous and empowered upper middle income economy by 2030. My administration's policies and programs remain encountered on private sector-led growth yourselves, with emphasis on increased productivity, value addition, beneficiation, and exports. This is critical for enhanced domestic production by our firms as we seek to increase capacity utilization as well as make inroads into African continental free trade area markets. To date, significant progress has been made with regards to fiscal consolidation, mining sector growth, agricultural production, tourism, and manufacturing, among others. Uh, with tourism, Comed Fundira tells us that uh, Zimbabwe is endowed with various sceneries of attraction, but we leave our country going to other people's countries to go and see skyscrapers in New York. Those who live in skyscrapers in New York come to Zimbabwe to see beauty. Let us be proud with our sceneries. The Second Republic is prioritizing the development of robust and modern infrastructure, which is a prerequisite of sustainable industrial and commercial activities in our country. This includes construction, upgrading and rehabilitation of our roads, energy, and water infrastructure as, they, as, as key enablers to sustainable socioeconomic growth. I was very impressed by the presenters as they analyzed each subsector of the economy. This is why I would want um, Professor Antuli to access your soft copies so we can interrogate more and possibly benefit from your own insights as people on the ground for us to craft our policies with more information and knowledge. I encourage members of the business community to take a leaf from players in the construction sector who are taking advantage of opportunities being created by my government in road construction and rehabilitation. The onus is now on you as business to grab these opportunities by not being just retailers, but also part of the production value chain. You should graduate to become patriotic citizens. We have full ownership 
of the means of production and ultimately the economy. The economy is yours. The wealth of this country is yours. You have the duty, you have the duty upon your shoulders to, if it is infrastructure, to build the infrastructure you want. If it is agriculture, to grow and feed the nation yourselves and they process products from agriculture until the products are on your table. So all of you here, all of you, you have a role to play, to build our country. Yes, here and there you may look outside for skills, for competencies, but now we've modeled our own state universities to promote and enhance science and technology and innovation. So the crop of our universities, the products from our universities are designed to create products and services, not to look for employment. In line with our Zimbabwe's open for business mantra, work is ongoing with regards removing hurdles which delay investment and obstruct trade. And we can best achieve this if we have more regular sessions of this nature where you tell us the challenges which you face, like the challenges which some of the uh, presenters outlined as challenges. And then we as a government have to address those challenges because you will have articulated them to us, you who face them on a daily basis. <laughs> I'm encouraged by the statement that most of the goods found in Zimbabwean supermarkets are locally manufactured. Hallelujah! <laughs> in this regard, my government will continue implementing policies which ensure innovation, knowledge transfer, and access to markets for business to maintain this momentum. On your part as business, I challenge you to collaborate with other institutions of higher and tertiary education to ensure that the various patents, products, and prototypes that they are producing end up on your shop shelves. In fact, we need dialogue between industry and our education sector, especially the science sector of our education, so that they know what industry wants and they are directed to research and produce and capacitate you to produce the things which you want. We have so many talented boys and girls. Just look at that talent which we have among our own children. We need to support them and Give them opportunity to excel the boy child and the girl child, which we have. Very talented. So our universities have innovation hubs built by the Second Republic, funded by the Second Republic, so that our boys and girls can play with their minds, trying to bring to fruition either a service or a product, free of charge, finance. With regards to trade facilitation, the Second Republic is in the process of upgrading and modernizing our ports of entry in order to improve competitiveness, easy congestion, and facilitate efficient movement of goods. Over and above this, plans are underway to establish a one-stop border post at the Bide Bridge port of entry. By the way, those of you who have the opportunity of visiting, either visiting or crossing the border through Bite Bridge, can you see how we have modernized our uh, Bite Bridge border post. It's the best actually in the region. <laughs> the Victoria Falls, Kazungula, Forbes, Machipanda, and the Plum Tree, the one stop border posts are also being prioritized for those areas. I exhort you, the private sector, 
to take full advantage of the benefits which these developments have to offer with regards to the timeliness and the reduction of costs. Going forward, I would like to encourage the business community yourselves to take advantage of the opportunities being offered by the African Continental Free Trade Area, whose mandate is to accelerate inter-African trade and boost Africa's trading position in the global market by strengthening Africa's voice and policy space in global trade negotiations. I would love that the Minister of Industry, Dr. Nzenza, find opportunities of explaining how this African continental free trade area works to our industry and commerce so that they take advantage. They may not know all the details of the protocols. I also take this opportunity to urge players in the private sector to invest in the communities in which you operate through implementing corporate social responsibility programs. As you do so, the growth in your respective sectors must be reflective of the welfare of your employees, including through investing in their training and the capacity building. As the country heads for the harmonized general elections, we are having harmonized elections sometimes this year. I want to say, I call upon all Zimbabweans, all Zimbabweans, to undertake this exercise of general elections peacefully. We are one people, under one flag, and under one national anthem. My government wishes to ensure business and investors that mechanisms are in place to guarantee the security of persons and property during the election season. May you, as the business community, complement these efforts by fostering peace, love, and harmony and tolerance among your workers. Together, let us remain on course of building the Zimbabwe we all want, brick upon brick, and stone upon stone. That's how Jerusalem was built, we are told. I'm told that... Um, most of your parents, we have had several cases now of bullying in the schools, both day schools as well as boarding schools. You as parents would want you to educate and counsel our children to respect each other. We have cases where kids have lost their lives in the process of bullying at school. We also have a, a second challenge of drug abuse. I've given instructions to the police that uh, police foot. With these remarks, it is now my singular honor to declare this business summit officially opened and commend the various presenters for their insightful perspectives. These will undoubtedly enrich our policy formulation, implementation as well as monitoring and evaluation processes. I thank you. God bless you all. Thank you.